Hello wonderful interpreters and thank you again for tuning in. Welcome to the second episode of our interview series. But before we dive into it, I want to thank all of you who keep calling Governor Inslee's office. Please keep on calling and here is the number. Remember to choose option 4. The governor hasn't intervened in our behalf with LNI. Would it be because this is an election year and the governor is focused on re-election? Is Wolfsey Local 1671 behind this? Well, you know me, so let's see. So welcome to another episode of Wolfsey Shenanigans. Take a look at this. This is a campaign contribution from Wolfsey to a political fund called Our Washington which nearly spent all of their funds attacking Inslee's opponent. Look at the bottom, the amount on the right, $250,000, all from Wolfsey. That's Wolfsey members do's money at work. Here on this one, you can see a direct contribution from Wolfsey to Governor Inslee, dated November 25th, 2019 for $1,500 and $2,500 in June this year for a total of $4,000. That is the maximum amount any single person or organization can contribute directly to a political candidate. I want you to know that we, as Washington interpreters, won't touch our future members' dues money to finance political campaigns. So this is not a promise, okay, because promises go up in the air. No, this is already ingrained in our bylaws. Read here, section 3. No membership dues or general treasury funds may be spent in support of or opposition to any political candidate, ballot measure, or political committee. We're not going to be like Wolfsey, we won't do this to you. Now, let's dive into this interview. Well, hello everyone, we're here at Active Chiropractic and Massage in Tacoma. Hi, Dr. Munt. Hello, nice to see you guys. Yeah, I've been treating uh, injured workers, Hispanic community, probably about 15 years. Just hearing some of the, the changes that are coming up, I haven't seen a lot of it uh, come through um, formally, like in letters yet. The issues with trying to get patients uh, who already speak a different language to understand basically how treatment works or the scheduling, it just seems like a really complicated issue to leave them to try to figure out on their own or through a website. You providers will have to use the web portal uh, to get interpreters to cover for appointments. And you will only be allowed to use interpreters directly for the emergency and urgent care situations. Ridiculous. I mean, if it's an emergency, you try to get people in right away. You jump through the hoops of a portal. Can that even be done in a timely fashion? So, yeah, that, that just doesn't seem like that's going to work very well. Do you have a specific, uh, specific group? or a group of interpreters that you call individually, your office does call them here and there to help you? Um, not for the most part. I mean, we don't have a lot of folks that walk in off the street, although that's happened once in a while. But most of the time they're referred from another provider and they already have an interpreter with them. Right. It's all been good experience. What is it that these interpreters help you with that you guys do not have to worry about? Interpreters help process that whole paperwork and make the flow so much easier and the patient is also more at ease with what's happening because it can all be explained in real time as it's happening. You won't have this convenience. The interpreter is already coming with the patient through a referral. How do you think you guys are prepared to deal with this, if at all? It, it's going to add a big um, impediment to processing patients and getting them through in a timely fashion and I, I really think that we're probably going to lose people in the shuffle. You don't have one interpreter or one person, contact person you can reach out to to ensure that person's like, hey, this, this appointment is on this day or we had to change something. There's, there's no easy way to, to reach that person now if it's going to be randomly assigned. It's always been just, you know, you take a phone call or you're, you're interacting with the interpreter, you're looking at your schedule, you simply put them in and right there, since everybody's right there, you're all on the same page. There's much less um, uncertainty. A lot of uncertainty when it comes There'll to be, that. I, can, I can see a lot more uncertainty coming from the new system. Yeah. Which means, you know, patients fall off and not making their appointments. And, and Ellen, I, of course, wants to see treatment progressing. A lot of uh, Hispanic patients, per se, 
uh, may not be legal in this country, so they fear they are intimidated mm -hmm. walking by themselves into an office to open a claim. So interpreters help ease that transition because yeah. they see somebody that, that looks like them for the most part yeah. and understand the, understands the language. But with this scheduling system, LNI is eliminating that connection. Being a, being afraid or being uncertain is always going to, I think, put uh, put the brakes on on anything, right? Treatment or whatever it is they're doing, just because it's a business relationship. I see you. I don't see you next time. I see somebody else. Yeah, I, I just think the the whole connection it, it will make it that much more difficult. Chain of staying with appointments and and uh, feeling some sort of um, link to the treatment and what's supposed to be happening from injured to getting better and getting back to employment. I want to ask you this. Have you had any problems with an interpreter or language agency because they have um, bribed you, interfered, they have they told you who to contract with? No, not in my office. I didn't even know that was a thing until recently. Have you had an interpreter or a group trying to counsel a patient of yours into changing uh, providers without your knowledge? No, no, I haven't. I've heard some of these things and, and it's a little shocking to me because uh, that's not what happens here. We had a provider tell us before that they're considering hiring somebody just for LNI claims. So have you guys considered what's going to happen? I haven't thought about it, but hearing these things, you know, it's really getting me to consider like, am I going to have to hire somebody now or what level of red tape now am I going to have to deal with that I didn't before? If you had the choice not to opt in into this new scheduling system, would you find a way to deal with your patients and, and have your same interpreters help you outside this scheduling system? Yeah, I, I would prefer to keep it the way it's been. It's worked really well. I can't see how rotating different interpreters with a, a certain a single patient is going to help them get better faster. It's either going to one turn into bigger problems, longer duration claims because there's confusion or you're going to have injured workers fall off because they're confused or perplexed and frustrated and they'll just quit. And if you don't kind of understand the totality of who you're dealing with and been there through the steps, I don't see how uh, you're going to know that if, if you're just dropped on that patient for the first time. And then they're going to have the time constraints. Oh, I have to go to the next appointment because they're dealing with the scheduling system. Mm -hmm. We live in the Seattle area, right? I mean, there's traffic, so someone's late, or they can't get there, or you can't pull somebody else to bring over and cover that spot. Especially if you're, you know, doing massage or something that's an hour-long appointment, and that time is booked for that person, but they don't show. You know, that could be go towards somebody else who will show up. But there's more certainty when you've got a, a person that they feel comfortable with and that's actually, okay, explain, okay, got that, and you figure it out right there. The portal I can see just being a nightmare, like because there's nobody to sort of catch those and fix them in, in real time. If you had LNI staff representatives here in this very interview, what would be the final message that you would have for them? How would you prefer to do business with interpreters? Having people get through treatment, somebody making sure that they get to their appointments and follow through. Unintended consequences are going to come up that nobody's thought about, and in the end of the day, it's going to be more expensive. Thank you. Would you prefer then to leave things the same way? Absolutely, because I think it's working fine. Thank you so much for your time. All right, thank you. Hello again. I hope that you have enjoyed the interview. Now remember, we are in the election process already, so please help us solidify the lead that we have. Read in the description below for instructions on how to download, print, and send us your signed card. Subscribe to keep on getting more relevant information for our interpreting community. See you in the next video, and as always, God bless.